Paul, you're going to stick with that strategy to slow the gameplay down. And here we go. The slowest of the leads possible for Shi Liang. That is the Wo Chin and the Grim Snarl. They will be facing down the Urshifu and the Calyrex. So, this is a, a really interesting position because the Grim Snarl will probably want to try and set up a reflect here. Uh, but the uh, Wo Chin is actually pretty threatened by a potential uh, U turn. Instead, just going for the Choice Scarf coaching to boost the Calyrex's attack and defense. The defense not going to matter too much, but that attack will help it break through the Tablets of Ruin and this Reflect. However, Wo Chien has just gotten off the Leech Seed, so will be able to regain some health after this. And even after that Reflect and the Tablets of Ruin, that just one boost brought that Wo Chien down below half health. It will recover a lot of health back with Leftovers and the Leech Seed recovery, but still probably within another uh, Glacial Lance, especially another Glacial Lance after being coached. I was going to say, if the Wo Chen uses Protect this turn, the Urshifu uh, can't target it because of that coaching, but it could just go for another coaching on that Calyrex Ice Rider, at which point in time that Glacial Lance should do enough damage to pick up the KO regardless. I like the pivot to the Rillaboom here, as it does give you yourself the opportunity for that Urshifu to come back later. Oh, wow. And really open up more opportunities for this Calyrex Ice Rider. Yes, it is on a timer because of that Leech Seed, but it's going to be so much more comfortable knowing that it's Rillaboom next to it while Kyogre is on the field. Oh, wow. Patrick is not playing like someone who is having their first appearance on stage. Calls out the Protect on Wo Chien and calls out the Switch from the Grim Snarl. Catches the Kyogre with the high horsepower on the Switch in and brings in the Rillaboom to immediately threaten super effective grass type damage against that Pokemon. What's really unique too about this position is that the Kyogre is honestly pinned. Mm -hmm. It can't necessarily terrestrialize into that grass typing as it'll take super effective damage from Glacial Lance. If it doesn't terrestrialize, it's going to be taking super effective damage from Woodhammer. And as long as Patrick is okay locking in the water type terrestrialization on that Ice Rider at this point in time, it will take resistant damage from Water Spout. Yeah, the Water Spout won't be able to do as much damage to a water type Calyrex as it would to the Ice type. Chi Liang, though, has decided not to terrestrialize the Kyogre at all, hoping that the Reflect and the Tablets of Ruin will be enough to survive a Wood Hammer coming out from that Rillaboom. And we saw previously, it can tank these hits. Ooh, that came really close, but will be able to be healed back up by a potential Pollen Puff or just go on the offensive with a Ruination here onto the Calyrex. The Origin Pulse will connect with both Pokemon, and because of the defensive terrestrialization, Calyrex survives, fires back a big Glacial Lance into those Pokemon and picks up the KO on Kyogre. That is the first restricted down, and it is for Patrick Connors, the new player out of Florida. You know, on the one hand, I think you want that Kyogre to go down sooner so you don't take damage from the Origin Pulse that put the Calyrex Ice Rider into the red. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, the fact that the Ice Rider was able to pick up the knockout onto the Kyogre means that it has that attack boost. It is still going to be on the field after this Leech Seed damage comes through, and as a result, really forces Shi Liang to focus in on that Pokemon. He won't be able to target his own partner with a Pollen Puff or the Rillaboom with a Pollen Puff because I think you want to go on the offense here against that Calyrex. And yes, while the Incineroar comes out to, onto the field and has access to Fake Out and then sort of allow Shi Liang to pivot a bit to get around it, his biggest attacker has been removed. Yeah, and I love this switch coming in from Patrick. You have the Reflect up, you have the Intimidate coming out from the Incineroar. The Assault Vest Pokemon is now off the field, so why not bring in your powerful special attacker in Raging Bolt? Will be able to eat this Will-O-Wisp quite comfortably, will not actually take any of the uh, uh, negative effects of the burn for its attack stat, but will have to deal with a regular damage over time. Wo Chien will be able to finally pick up the KO onto Calyrex with a little bit of a Pollen Puff, but now Patrick is able to either bring back in the Urshifu, which is going to be extremely happy to have Rain up, and Wo Chien terrestrializing away from its defensive typing, or bringing back in the Rillaboom for Fake Out Pressure. Patrick has all the options here. He does, and even though Close Combat would still deal super effective damage to that Wo Chien, 
you want to lock into surging strikes as it doesn't come at the cost of your own defensive power. Mm -hmm. Of course, you do have to think about the Incineroar first, because if you do get burned on your Urshifu, then it's going to be a very uphill battle for you. But once you are able to knock out that Incineroar, it cannot protect, it cannot stop the surging <laughs> strikes, and it certainly can't take all three hits of it. Oh, it can't. Oh. Okay, never mind. It does take all three hits to pick up that KO there. Uh, but still, this Urshifu is now in a prime position to keep up the offensive pressure. Your only option if you're Shi Liang is to try and land enough Spirit Breaks into the Urshifu and the Raging Bolt to pick up the KO on both of them. And I don't think you just have time for that, even with the defensive boosts. Yeah, uh, this is a really interesting position to be in because the Wo Qian, you know, if, it, if Wo Qian were still grass and dark, maybe there would be a chance here because the Urshifu at least would have to be switching around to reset the attack. But because it's now poison typing, those surging strikes are still going to be dealing a lot of damage, and there's nothing really that Xi Lang can do to protect that Wo Qian, except for maybe going for Thunder Wave Paralysis on that Urshifu. You could, and that would give you then the opportunity to outspeed and land those Spirit Breaks prior to the Urshifu attacking, attacking potentially next turn. Uh, but you're still going to be taking a ton of damage this turn, assuming the surging strikes go through, which We'll have to see. Odds are Urshifu will be able to connect that attack. And while it does take all three hits once again to pick up that KO, Grimmsnarl will go down. And unfortunately, Grimmsnarl did have to use that turn to try and paralyze the Urshifu and get a full paralysis, which means that there is no light screen up to protect this Wo Qian. Patrick has mixed up the damage enough to get this Raging Bolt in a decent position to start dealing the damage to Wo Qian. However, uh, there is still grassy terrain, leftovers recovery, and leech seed recovery for this Wo Qian. And at this point, uh, that's going to be a lot of health back. Unfortunately, probably not enough for both of these big offensive threats. No, so the thing you have to keep in mind here is that while Ruination will do 50% damage to the opposing Pokemon, you have to do that 50% damage, <laughs> basically, until you get the Pokemon down to one HP, at which point it would be able to pick up the knockout there. So Ooh. the best way for this Wo Qian to navigate this end game is to set up Leech Seed to protect every other turn and just try and get as much health recovery as possible. Fortunately for Patrick, though, with that Rillaboom still available in the back, while it won't be able to deal much damage to the poison type Wo Qian, it cannot be Leech Seeded and it also will be able to switch onto the field to remove the Leech Seed from one of Patrick's Pokemon. So it still is a bit of a difficult endgame, but Shi Liang Tang's win condition, interestingly enough, isn't to necessarily use Ruination or Pollen Puff, it's to let Leech Seed do its job. Yeah, Shi Liang's uh, win condition is to survive, hopefully. Exactly. <laughs> you want to outlast the competition here. You don't want to knock them out necessarily. Well, I mean, you do, but you know, what I mean. you know what I mean. Yeah, really needs to get some of these paralyses on the Urshifu and protect from the Raging Bolt, because it looks like Shi Liang may just about be within range of one more Surging Strikes, which would, of course, go through this Protect. There it is, the Surging Strikes into it. Actually, probably not quite oh. enough here. Uh, but again, Patrick may have missed an opportunity or did miss an opportunity to actually pick up the, uh, the win in that last turn by going for the Thunderclap instead of the Thunderbolt into the Wu Qian. Which means that Shi Lian gets another turn of Leftovers Recovery, gets another turn of Leech Seed Recovery from both of these Pokemon, and another turn of Burn Damage onto the Raging Bolt. So, Shi Liang is definitely going to have to get a little lucky here, either another, like a double protect, or a double protect and a full paralysis from this Urshifu, which has not been fully paralyzed at all yet, which I know is a fallacy to say that it will <laughs> now definitely be fully paralyzed, but you know, that is the thing that you have to take into account. You have, like, Patrick has gotten pretty lucky on those rolls right now. With the Reflect wearing off as well, now it's only just that Tablets of Ruin ability that's limiting Urshifu's attack power. Ooh, there's the Ruination, no Thunderclap coming through, so just trying to get a little bit more damage off onto that Raging Bolt. Again, no Paralysis, so the Urshifu connecting with the Surging Strikes. Still not enough to pick up the KO onto the Wo Qian, but a Thunderbolt or a Draco Meteor would be plenty to pick up the KO onto Wo Qian and put us into game two. And there it is, Patrick Connors, just above 
the damage threshold that he needed against the Grim Snarl and the Wo Qian, which has caused a, sh a, a shakeup from Xiliang Tang. Now we see the Incineroar and the Grim Snarl lead, which did look extremely oppressive when he played Paul Chua earlier on. But Patrick has also made some adjustments and brought the Raging Bolt in immediately. And with a turn one Thunder Wave onto this Earth Shifu, there is the maximum potential for this Pokemon to be paralyzed yet again, again in this matchup. We will have to wait a moment as Parting Shot from Incineroar will allow Shili and King to remove the Incineroar from the field and switch in something that's more capable of taking a Surging Strikes. I have to imagine this is that Wo Chen making yep. another appearance here in the top eight. Absolutely, Wo Qian now on the field, and Urshifu finally gets paralyzed. So the first turn of game one, our first paralysis. Wo Qian able to tank this Thunderbolt quite easily and recover off a lot of that health back with the leftovers. And now, this Grimmsnarl has been untouched, as opposed to in game one, where Grimmsnarl lost more than half of its health on turn one. That means there's space for Reflect, and that means there's space for Light Screen. The one unique thing, though, about that Paralysis on the Urshifu is that it didn't actually lock into a move with its mm. Choice Scarf. It still has the opportunity to switch things up here, and as we see this Calyrex Ice Rider return to the field, this could be a great opportunity for the Calyrex Ice Rider to start going on the offense. Well, there's the Reflect from Grimmsnarl, going to now protect itself and the Wo Qian from a potential attack from That's a the miss. Urshifu. And Urshifu actually dodges, dodges the Ruination and gets the coaching off onto Calyrex on the switch in. So Patrick's Urshifu was paralyzed in turn one, but makes up for it in turn two by dodging that Ruination and preserving half of its hit points. And that's a great opportunity now for Patrick to, again, start using Glacial Lance to deal damage to the Grimmsnarl and the Wo Qian. There is no opportunity for this Calyrex to be burned this turn. There's no opportunity for it to be intimidated as it is holding that clear amulet item. The best thing that Shi Liang Tang can do here is switch in a Pokemon such as this Kyogre who can maybe take that ice type attack better and then retaliate with big damage in the next turn. I love the way Patrick is calling out these Kyogre switch-ins, knowing that now that you have two physical attackers out, Grimmsnarl thinks that it's done its job. It's set the Reflect, and so it's going to switch out. And you've already seen the Incineroar, and you know that the uh, Kyogre is likely in the back. A high horsepower is extremely safe. This time, though, the Wochian will terrestrialize back into that poison typing, but a second coaching connects with the Calyrex, which did take that ruination. So at 50% health, but now a plus two high horsepower into the Kyogre, dealing just a little bit of chip damage there. The Reflect and the Tablet still being extremely important without that big base power of the Glacial Lance. I think the high horsepower there on the Kyogre slot was probably more in anticipation of that Incineroar making a return appearance, trying to limit the opportunity it would have to connect Will-O-Wisp again, like we've seen it do in previous games against this team archetype. Well, Rillaboom will switch back in for Patrick to set the grassy terrain and potentially heal off a little bit of Calyrex's health as it protects and tries to dodge an attack from the Kyogre and the Wo Qian. However, Xi Liang is just going to say, yep, I also love to have health recovery available and just pollen puffs the Kyogre for a full power water spout in the rain. Now, the Rillaboom does have the Assault Vest, so it is able to tank this pretty well but that Calyrex is much more threatened by that. It is much more threatened by that, but now this Kyogre is very much threatened by a wood hammer from the Rillaboom on Patrick's side of the field. The Kyogre cannot terrestrialize to get rid of that weakness, and even if you do switch in one of your other Pokemon, it's gonna be taking so much damage on that switch. Yeah, just like before, we saw the wood hammer dealing a little bit over 50%, no and another Ruination is dodged by Patrick's Pokemon, oh, no. and the Origin Pulse oh, dodge no. misses the Calyrex, only connects with the Rillaboom. Boom, so Calyrex is untouched this turn, and Kyogre will go down. 
Shi Liang Tang trying to find an opportunity there to use Ruination to bring that Rillaboom within KO range from a otherwise resisted Origin Pulse. Unfortunately, though, missing the Ruination, missing the Origin Pulse, that is such an unfortunate turn for Shi Liang. Now we find ourselves in the same position we were in in game number one, where the Kyogre has been KO'd. The Calyrex isn't even burned yet, has those attack boosts, and is honestly ready to start going through these Pokemon. You have to be careful about the fake out here from that Incineroar, of course. But still, Patrick Connors might have found his way through and found a way to inch closer and closer to that top four finish. Well, Xi Liang is trying anything possible to get back in this game. The Will-O-Wisp will connect onto the Rillaboom, so that Pokemon will be burned for the future of this game. However, the U-turn will allow it to switch back out into that Urshifu. The Urshifu, again, the ability to hit through Protect and currently being boosted by the rain is a big deal. However, it is paralyzed. There will remain the opportunity for it to be fully paralyzed on any given turn. The Leech Seed tries to get set up, but into the Protect. It can't be burned, though, and it cannot be intimidated because if it locks into Surging Strikes, it's guaranteed to be a critical hit. This is a very similar position to what we saw in game number one, where all this Urshifu has to do is connect those attacks. If Shi Liang switches in the Grimmsnarl for that Incineroar, you're still gonna be taking a ton of damage from that Surging Strikes. If you leave the Incineroar in, and if your Shifu attacks, that's going to be a KO after damage from that Ice Rider as well. This is such an important position for Shi Liang. He needs to find a way out here. Shi Liang needs a free turn, especially out of that Urshifu needs a full paralysis to get some more breathing room back in this game. Will-O-Wisp will land on the Calyrex, so reducing the attack of the base power of all of Calyrex's attack thanks to the burn, as Leech Seed will finally connect with the Urshifu. So, Kolochian is back in that position where it can start tanking up a lot of hits, but the Surging Strikes will cut through the Incineroar, knock it down, and take it off the field. Wo Qian trying to set Shi Liang up for the end game where it is able to outstand and outlast the competition. Unfortunately, though, with four Pokemon still remaining for Patrick Connors, even Ooh. though the burn connects with that Calyrex, it still does about 40% damage to Shi Liang's Wo Qian. Yeah, that's plus three attack. Even though the Urshifu is going to be contributing to that Wo Qian's recovery, thanks to the Leech Seed, Patrick can easily switch it off the field into that Rillaboom or even the Raging Bolt to get rid of that source of recovery. There are so many options for Patrick to proceed through this endgame, and Shi Liang, again, is just running out of those opportunities. It's Wo Qian and Grimmsnarl, so this is a big difference from game one. Grimmsnarl is still out on the field and still available to fire off those spirit breaks to set Thunder Wave if necessary on a Pokemon. Uh, well, actually, there are no more Pokemon that can be paralyzed. No. Because the only non-status Pokemon is the Raging Bolt. Uh, but there is the Leech Seed, so both Pokemon staying in on Patrick's side. The Surging Strikes connects onto Grimmsnarl, not going to be enough to pick up a KO on, on its own. The rain has faded away, so the rain has passed. We'll have to see if this Calyrex is going to be able to do enough damage to that Grimmsnarl. Fires back a Spirit Break onto the Urshifu, not enough to pick up the KO on, in one hit as well. May be able to get enough after this uh, grassy terrain recovery, but has to survive a great Glacial Lance first and does. That burn coming in handy there, giving Grimmsnarl the opportunity to remain on the field for one more turn and to most likely lock in a KO onto the Urshifu, assuming it stays on the field. Mm -hmm. Patrick has a difficult decision here to make, as on the one hand, you could leave Urshifu on the field, you could hope that you are able to attack and then find that KO on the Grimmsnarl with it, or you can switch it out and know that, yes, while you are going to be switching in a Pokemon that will take some damage, the Urshifu can come back out later. I think he's very smartly following the same plan he had in game number one, where the Wochian is the final Pokemon he wants to target down, because it can't do damage, it can only really recover. 
Yeah, but it at least has a target to recover this time around. Grimmsnarl would be a decent target for a potential Pollen Puff, as Rillaboom will switch in to reset the grassy terrain, which is helping the Calyrex uh, not faint so quickly from the burn and leaf seed damage, but also is healing up the Wotion and that Grimmsnarl. There's another Pollen Puff connecting with Grimmsnarl will heal 50% of its health as Spirit Break connects onto the Rillaboom. Not quite enough to pick up the KO. Uh, maybe just quite, maybe, I think one hit point remaining after burn before the grassy terrain and the Glacial Lance again, still not enough to deal damage. Yeah, the grassy terrain goes first anyway. Uh, yeah, but that was such a close margin for that Rillaboom to hold on to for sure. And we'll have the opportunity now to at least go for some big damage with a wood hammer. Could also try and flinch the Grim Snarl this yeah. turn so that it has to take another turn of Glacial Lance damage. But if you do that, the Wo Chen is free to go for another Pollen Puff yeah. and heal that Pokemon back up. It really is a race against the clock for both of these trainers as there's so much damage over time being done thanks to the burns thanks to oh. the Wojian. but the fact that the reflect has worn off does make this turn a little bit easier for patrick you want to prevent that grim snarl from getting reflect up again and at which point it would be up for the remainder of the game if you go for fake out here you stop reflect and you have the chance of maybe maybe doing enough damage to ko here with glacial lance oh actually just the ruination so xi liang is not even going to try to protect the grim snarl with a Pollen Puff, Glacial Lance comes through onto both of those Pokemon oh! and picks up the KO on Grimmsnarl, with Grimmsnarl going down without access to Reflect, mitigating that damage. Calyrex gets a, a second Chilling Nay boost on top of two coachings from Urshifu earlier on in the game, and that is a scary horse. Unfortunately for Wo Qian, it had an incredible weekend here. It has shown us exactly why it is one of the treasures of ruins. It has so much board pressure between these leech seats, the leftovers recovery, the potential for grassy terrain recovery. But at the end of the day, will Pollen Puff and Ruination be enough to stop the Rillaboom, the Calyrex, the Raging the Bolt, Raging Bolt is and still the Urshifu. There. I think Wo Chien will get maybe one more knockout this turn onto the Calyrex thanks to that burn and leech seed combination, but it all comes down to how much is healed up by the grassy terrain, honestly. Yeah, Xi Liang is going to play to all of his outs here, and I just have to shout out the incredible timing from Patrick Connors to switch in the Rillaboom precisely on the turn when Reflect was going to end. By preventing Grimmsnarl from resetting Reflect and also potentially pre preventing the Grimmsnarl from ever setting a light screen, that means that the Raging Bolt can come back in and also still deal big damage to the Wo Chien. Yeah, but unfortunately, it will not be this Calyrex who takes that final knockout against the Wo Chien, as it will be taken out by the combination of the Leech Seed recovery and the burn. Well, that is Calyrex down. Wo Chien has won a war of attrition against one of the Pokemon remaining on Patrick's team, but Patrick still has a full health Raging Bolt to switch in here. However, Raging Bolt was already on the field, which means that it has consumed its booster energy, so it no longer has that special attack boost and is a very big, juicy target for a Leech Seed. It is, and that's exactly why we see Patrick protect it this turn. I think what he's trying to do is chip down that Wo Chen. I, I say Just the word as much chip, as you can. but it's a wood hammer <laughs> that's dealing that damage as much as you can before you go on the offense with this Raging Bolt, as it is really the only Pokemon that is being unaffected by the Tablets of Ruin ability and can hit this Raging Bolt, for, or excuse me, can hit this Wo Chen for neutral damage. You know, I wonder if Patrick wanted Rillaboom to go down there, going for the Wood Hammer, and so Rillaboom surviving with six hit points means that Urshifu does not get to come in for free, which means that he either needs a double protect on that Raging Bolt, or is just going to have to take the Leech Seed. That's a tough decision to make here. On the one hand, you don't want to help the Wo Chen heal up anymore. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, I feel like the more passive you play in this situation, <laughs> the slower you are allowing this Wo Chen to find a way to crawl 
jump back into this end game. Yeah, the Wochi and all oh, the Leech Seed. Oh, no. it connected. Just a little bit longer. It moved at a snail's pace there to actually seed the Raging Bolt. There's the Thunderbolt connecting with Wo Chien. Okay. Feeling probably, I would guess, about 40% health uh, based off of, of what we just saw on that bar. And we're covering a lot back from the Leech Seed. Again, it recovers a portion of the seeded opponent's health. And Raging Bolt is extremely bulky, which means that Wo Chien gets to recover a lot of health back. However, Grassy Terrain has faded, which is another important source of recovery for the Wo Chien. Urshifu back out on the field, thanks to the Unseen Fist ability, will be able to attack through any sort of protects from this Wo Chien. As a result, I think you have to go for this Leech Seed right away. You don't necessarily get much benefit in this turn cool, from no protecting paralysis. there. No Paralysis means you will be taking damage from this Surging Strikes. The big question enough. is, is it enough? That's enough. That's enough? That, that's enough. This Thunderbolt from Patrick Connors, Raging Bolt, should be enough to take down this Wo Chien and advance to the top four. A critical hit just for good measure. Why not? Patrick Connors from Florida, a second semifinalist here at the North American International Championships. His previous results were top.